today on Earth Focus. Rear Admiral David Titley on climate change and national security. Coming up on Earth Focus. As far as climate change, how does it actually affect the military? There are really three things. One is it affects our bases, and the bases are where we generate our armed forces, our soldiers, sailors, airmen, and marines that are ready to go and do the work of the nation. So those impacts could be rising seas, they could be droughts, they can be floods. For example, if you have a drought and you dry out the ranges, you cannot use live ammunition anymore because it sets too many fires. Second is the Arctic is opening up, the ice is melting, and that's opening up a whole new theater that the United States Navy and our Coast Guard partners are going to have to work in. So even though our budgets are very, very constrained in the Department of Defense and the Department of the Navy, uh, the climate doesn't care about our budgets. It doesn't care about our politics. It's just going to change according to the laws of physics. And finally, when we have the National Guard responding to let's say humanitarian disasters, natural disasters in the United States, that's, those are less forces that potentially the president could call on to go overseas. Why does that matter? The Department of Defense is really shrinking. So if we see an increase in the number of disasters at home, it becomes a real challenge for the Department of Defense. And where we already see, not in the future, but in today, the kind of threats that we're gonna see from national security is just look no further than North Africa. Look at the Arab Spring. One of the contributing causes was a very rapid run-up in the price of wheat. Now, why did wheat almost double right as the Arab Spring got going? It, it doubled because there were terrific droughts in Australia, and if everybody remembers the fires of a few years ago in the Russian summer, the big droughts there, worldwide wheat harvest really contracted. So you couple the drought with really bad governance with already existing strife. And again, it's sort of like dumping gasoline on and then just, just throwing matches. And eventually, you know, one of those matches catches. Where does it go from there? I don't know, my crystal balls know better than anyone else's, but I would argue that climate change is one of the contributing factors to the mess that we're seeing right now in that part of the world. So the bottom line is, is we know enough to act. So we already know that we've baked in a bunch of climate change because you can think of this as this huge flywheel, kind of this really big diesel engine that's just getting going. And even if somehow we magically turned off all carbon dioxide, all greenhouse gases today, we'd still have decades of warming to come. So we are going to have to adapt. But ultimately, we're going to have to change the world's energy system. You know, we didn't get out of the Stone Age because we ran out of stones. So it doesn't mean that we're going to have to get out of the fossil fuel age because we run out of fossil fuel. Uh, ultimately, you know, I, I don't believe in climate change. I'm convinced by the evidence of climate change, but I do believe in America. And I believe this is a country that when we get focused, we will do tremendous things. You look at World War II, you look at the moonshot, you look at Down. rescuing Apollo 13. Four forward, drift into the right a little. 30 seconds. Forward, drift. Our country does Contact tremendous light. things when we're okay, focused. We need to get focused when we need to do this. Base here. The Eagle has landed. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.